After watching and loving the hell out of Sabata, I quickly moved on to Adios Sabata from the Sabata trilogy um, because I wanted more of that fun spaghetti western action that I got in the first one. Unfortunately, it's not as complete or as enjoyable a movie that we got the first time around. Not to say it's not good, it's still a fun, uh, enjoyable film, just not to the same level that I really loved Sabata. This time, Lee Van Cleef isn't available for the role, so they've drawn in Yule Brenner uh, to start as Sabata, and they do that kind of thing that Italian movies do a lot, where they bring in various characters who've been in other movies, but they don't seem to know each other again. Um, we've got uh, uh, Secudo, I think his name is, is a rather large guy that was a destitute uh, ex-soldier in the first one. Again, he's kind of leading a, a rebellion here uh, against the Austrians that have invaded Mexico. Uh, the bad guys, like a General Skimmel, who they're all after to take down. Sabata gets hired to take him down. There's another guy called Ballantine, much like uh, Banjo was in the first one, this kind of... Uh, character, blonde haired character who proclaims uh, to want to help Sabata but seems to try and double cross him at every turn and I just I kind of like that. We uh, get this uh, parkour Indian guy as well from the first one and we get a, in addition we get a rather morose Mexican who has these giant ball bearings that he catches in his feet and viciously kicks towards people. It's interesting. It's visually something very different that I hadn't seen before and I kind of liked it. But putting it into this grander idea in the political machinations and the war setting kind of robbed Sabata for something that I, I really kind of liked, which was criminals against worse people. We really wanted to see Sabata get out of ahead of them all. Here we get some real kind of atrocities, a genocide of a people and it just it takes a, an almost too serious enough tone while still trying to be fun and almost kind of heisty in the way it goes about it because the crux of this is about a wagon full of gold that um, General Skimmel wants to, to buy weapons and pay his men that uh, Secudo wants to help the revolutionaries buy weapons and that Sabata wants because it's a wagon full of gold. Who wouldn't want it? <laughs> um, for the last, most of the part of the movie, I enjoyed a lot of what we got here. There are certain moments that lean heavily into the original Sabata, uh, but not in the most exciting way. More as kind of like a little bit derivative of scenes from that movie. Yul Brenner doesn't quite cut as good a figure as Lee Van Cleef because he's already made a mark as this character uh, and you get some really good action set pieces yet again. Yeah, you get uh, the idea of um, an army and underdogs and people constantly being um, cornered out of nowhere. There's a lot of uh, things that just happen and you're not quite too sure how they got from A to B uh, and this one that didn't seem a, a simple conclusion to jump to, but somehow it happens in this one. Uh, lots of fun sequences as well, which I did really kind of sit up and pay attention to. There's a wonderful introduction to Sabata uh, at the start of the movie, which I won't spoil for you. It's a, a fun competition that, that was really entertaining. Sabata here, his weapon of choice seems to be a, a almost semi-automatic rifle but he has to kind of aid it with this clip that he pushes through um, and always seems to have a cigar instead of a bullet at the final one so he can take out after killing everybody and just look cool and he does quite often throughout the movies use this tact. Adios Sabata was, it was fun, it was good, I had a great action set pieces and had some characters that I had some chuckles with but it just, you know, after Sabata, it just didn't quite live up to that masterful take on the Spaghetti Western. I liked it, but it was nowhere near as good 
is the first one. And next we're going to move on to the return of Sabata, uh, where Lee Van Cleef returns. Hopefully this will be more like the first one, but to be honest, knowing that these are Italian movies as well, I could quite imagine that it's going to go in a completely other bonkers direction and I wouldn't be surprised if again none of the characters remember or know each other in this one. Bring it on, I love these kind of movies. As always there's more content up here that you can check out more of my videos if you think I deserve it. Hit this video with a like, subscribe or share, that would be fantastic as well and if you're feeling extra supportive you can join the membership program which really helps the running costs of this channel or Patreon. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Man V Film.